Hello, my name is Zachary Meeting. Hola, mi nombre es David Molina. Welcome to today's presentation of the fourth and final workshop for the Pomona Parks and Facilities Master Plan. Bienvenida a la cuarta y última encuesta de la ciudad de Pomona. The purpose of the Parks and Facilities Master Plan is to develop a roadmap or a guide for the future of parks and recreation development within the community. The information collected is based on local community needs, as well as the recommendations are designed to support the local community of Pomona. The timeline for developing the Park and Recreation Master Plan took almost 12 months. We are here at the end after going through a thorough inventory, an extensive community engagement process, developing the needs, looking at recommendations, and finally, where we are is reporting the final presentation material. Early on in the process, we took an inventory of all the parks and facilities, where the parks are located, their conditions, essentially what is available to the community. Not only did we develop an inventory of what facilities exist, we also looked at where they exist. So as we collect community input, we can see where the community resides, as well as where the parks are located throughout the entire city. In addition to the inventory information, we also look at the community in terms of demographics, the total population size, as well as what is the age breakdown among that population. We also compare that population to the county standards, the averages for the surrounding cities. We find that the largest population segment, 36%, falls between the age ranges of 35 to 64. This information helps us start to dial in programs and facilities for the various age ranges that exist within the community. We had a great turnout for participants throughout this process with almost 8,500 touch points in the community that includes 758 direct data points. That's through one-on-one -on -one interviews, online responses, as well as in-person workshops. Most importantly, in the data collected throughout this process, we see an equal distribution geographically across the entire city for each of these outreach methods. Looking at some of the results from the multimodal survey, we see that 49% of the respondents get their parks and recreation information on programs and facilities through the city website or Google. 55% of the respondents of this survey recreate at least once a month. 21% utilize Ganesha Park as their most used recreation park within the city. And then 45% of the respondents are satisfied with the existing care and maintenance of the parks and recreation facilities. Some of the information we collected during workshop one were what important community characteristics existed to the participants, what issues or trends might negatively impact those community characteristics, and then what role can parks and recreation do in support of those community characteristics. And we found some of the top responses are identified here. Those community characteristics that people found were clean and safe parks. Issues that might negatively impact that would be homelessness, park maintenance elements, and how parks and recreation can help improve some of those issues or trends are through park maintenance improvements as well as security. Another question we asked during workshop two was what park feature or recreation facility you would like to add or improve? Some of the top responses include playgrounds, restrooms, fitness stations, lighting, trees and shade, as well as many others. The final question asked for workshop two was what program, class, activity or service you would like to see added or improved? Some of the top responses we heard were health and fitness, youth sports, safety programs, and aquatic programs as being some of the top elements we'd heard during this participation survey. For workshop number three, we asked participants to prioritize all the previous information they had heard and rank them. What we had heard in workshop number three in regards to facilities, the most important items were lighting and parks, restrooms, park maintenance, park improvements, security systems, community center renovations, as well as others. Largely, we see a lot of maintenance, repairs, and renovation recommendations requested by the city as common elements or common threads throughout this process. As part of workshop three, we also shared all the previous data with the participants and asked them to prioritize the programs that we had shared with them. Some of those programs that came up as the highest priorities were items such as homeless outreach, aquatic programs, low cost programs, enforce the rules at parks, fitness, sports programs, youth programs, as well as several others. In order to come up with a prioritization of all the information we'd heard, we take every idea that we collected from the community, how often we heard it, and where we heard it, such as small group interviews, public workshops, or the multimodal community survey, and then we rank them on this list. 
we do the same process for the program prioritization. We take into account all the ideas we've heard, how often we heard it, and whether it was in a small group exercise, public workshop, or the multimodal survey. This creates the prioritization ranking for all those ideas. With all that previous information collected, we've prepared preliminary recommendations on the following slides listed in alpha order. The facility recommendations listed here in alphabetical order carry over many of the things we'd heard during the community outreach along the lines of maintenance and upgrades, elements such as community center renovations, lighting, park improvements and maintenance, restroom improvements, security systems, swimming pool improvements. Also new facility developments are part of the recommendations, including dog parks, outdoor fitness equipment, skate park development, as well as trail developments. Also identified in the master plan are recommendations for programs. Again, listed here in alphabetical order is based on all the community information we collected. Program recommendations include arts and crafts classes, park rule enforcement, fitness classes, homeless outreach programs, developing more programs throughout the community, as well as sports, summer camps, and youth programs. We encourage you to take the fourth and final survey available from July 29th to August 12th. Please share your thoughts and ideas on what we have collected so far and presented throughout this master plan process. Thank you for watching, and thank you to the entire community whose participation has made this vision a reality. Muchísimas gracias por ver este video y ser participante de la hermosa visión que tenemos para la ciudad de Pomona.